Hey, loading guys and gals, the Welsh Shunter here, back with yet another Game Pass video. And in this one, we'll be looking at the easiest games, regardless of length, in which to bolster your game score up with the least amount of stress possible. Now, there will always be an updated Game Pass easy video, since the lovely folks at Microsoft keep updating the best service known in the console land. But, I will say before we begin, this list won't include any PC console command ones, as Microsoft basically updated their terms of service, which means games like Subnautica, Fallout 4, Elder Scrolls, and the like, you could get full game score in minutes, no longer applies, and you could potentially get bans by sites like True Achievements, etc. So if you're expecting games like that on PC on here, I'm afraid you're going to be left a little disappointed. Also, there's quite a few games on here that I have done guides for, so if you're looking for anything specific, I'll put my Game Pass playlist down in the description box for ye to check out. So anyway, let's go take a look at how much more gamer score you can get from the easiest gamer score on Game Pass games from December 2021. Townscaper. Now we start off with quite possibly the easiest Game Pass game to ever hit the service. All we gotta do is basically build seven buildings, build a thousand blocks up to the sky, and job done. That takes about 15 minutes, and I've got a guide for it too if needed. Lovely job. D E E E E E E R Simulator. Now if you're a fan of the original GOAT, GOAT Simulator, you will enjoy this one, although it's not as goatish as the original, it still is quite an easy completion. Even with the supposed hard, quote unquote, boss fight, the more you die, the more hearts you obtain, so you will beat it eventually. It's fun on the bun, oh, and of course I have a guide for it too. Rubber Bandits. Now this is a recent addition, but it's as fun as it is easy, although fair warning, you will need at least four controllers to completely finish the full 1000 Gs. Uh, the majority you can't do on your own at the beginning of the heists, uh, but as I said, you will need extra controllers to completely finish this one. Unpacking. Welcome to the most karmic game on this list. Unpacking does what it says on the tin. You unpack stuff and, well, yeah, job done. There is also a setting you can use where you can place items anywhere instead of its intended location, making this completion even quicker. Plus, you've got to flush lots of toilets for some reason, but, uh, you know, that's always fun, right? <laughs> right. The Procession to Calvary. Now, here's one you wouldn't expect to be so funny and so good, uh, but here we are. Now, the developer was on, I think he was on one, actually, when he made this, but he made it funny and easy for achievement, so you can't complain. There are quite a few missables to watch out for, but it's a quick game if you do miss something. Yours truly, of course, has a guide if you need it. Winky face. Donut County. Now, top game this. Uh, the aim of the game is to stick things in an ever-increasing hole, so that's always hilarious. But doing that for every level gets you the full 1k, plus beating a boss without taking damage. It is still very easy enough, and again, I got a guide for you from me if needed. Gang Beasts. Now this was before Rubber Bandits, but it plays the same. It's the multiplayer beat em up, wobbly ass, wibbly controls. It, it, I mean, it is fun, and it can be easy assuming that you've got two controllers. Uh, it can take a little bit of time to get used to, but once done, you will smash it, smash it. Daisy. Now you probably wouldn't expect a survival zombie game up here, but thanks to a whole bunch of le legends, Close enough. Uh, making a Discord server in order to be accepted to be placed on a map that has everything ready for you. They've got carefully placed weapons, enemies, and more, which makes this a legit headache into a genuine legit stroke of the balls. I.e. very, very nice. Now you will need one player to help with tying you up. But apart from that, it is Seeples. Conan Exiles. Now this game is all about console commands, and as far as I'm aware, it's pretty fine to use when it's on Xbox anyway. For some reason, PC are just the ones with the problem. Now you can get the full 1K without issue, and they released DLC for it, but annoyingly, you have to pay 16 bucks for it. But if, and hopefully when it goes free, you'll have another 460 gamer score with console commands at your power. Doom 64. Now I hope you like cheating, 
good. Because Doom 64 is another classic that, be that can be done in less than two hours with the use of passwords. You use passwords, you win. The Walking Dead, Michonne. Well, what can we say about this one? It's another Telltale classic. Make some decisions, watch some favourite characters die, cry, laugh, die, gain an easy 1k. That's job done. The Little Acre. Now, this is a very cute game, actually, and this point-and-click adventure game can be done in as little as an hour. Uh, if you want to smash it out in one run, just don't use any hints, any solutions, and again, complete it in less than an hour. If you do need a second playthrough, it's cute enough to go through again, and quick enough that it is pretty painless. Ark Survival Evolved. Now, this is another survival-type game, very much like Conan, which can be thankfully done with the use of those gorgeous and ever-loving console commands. Some achievements do require you to actually fulfil an object or wish, but it takes barely any time at all. The longest one is probably for uncovering the whole map, but that's still easy when you can use unlimited stamina for your flyboy dino boy. I've got a guide for you again, if needed. What remains of Edith Finch? Now what an underrated gem this is. Walking simulator, Edith Finch tasks you as Big Edie, walking through your family's house, room by room, interacting with and completing each story. Now I'm pretty sure there's only one or two achievements that you may miss, but you can easily get back to it if missed somehow, but they're very, very easy anyway. Uh, emotionally though, it does take its toll mind, so best to prepare your head. The Bard's Tale ARPG remastered and re-snarkled. Welcome back to the once more deliciousness that is console commands. This one could have been genuinely a tough completion legit, but the commands of life gets you this in around two and a half hours. I have a guide for this too if needed. The Sims 4. Now an easy 50 hour plus completion legit this one, but the uh, fantastic CCs make a return and make this an everlasting dream. Even if you've never played The Sims, it is easy enough to grasp, as long as you pay attention to my guide that I have for this. Eh? Wink, wink. Check it out. It'll get you the achievement in around two to three hours. Tell me why. Back to the Life is Strange style stuff, and tell me why is no different. Great invested story, easy achievements, missables you can barely miss. Now this will actually take around 8 hours or so to fully complete, 2-3 to three hours is the first chapter, but still, it's easy if you're after that cheeky, cheeky gamer skull. Day of the Tentacle Remastered Now the first of three easy of the remastered LucasArts legendary games, now, and first up is a mega fun one, Dr. Tur reminds us of the awesome point and click and humour style while giving us them easy cheeves. Now there are only a few things to be wary about and that's don't skip any cutscenes, you gotta put a radio on early in the game and leave it for the entire game, never turn it off, and do a few missables including putting a ham hamster in a microwave. Yeah, so that's easy and fun, it's just what we want. Plus again, got a guide for it if needed. Full Throttle Remastered. This is the second of three LucasArts classics now, and this was actually the easiest of the three. It's the same style, point and click, it's all fun, no hassle, and again, my guide is available if needed. NHL 94 Rewind. Now this is one I considered not putting on this list, but thanks to being able to change a few settings, picking the literal best team you can versus you're able to pick the worst team every time, plus there's a little scoring trick you can do to make this as simple as hell, this had to go on. The controls are easy enough, uh, they have been modernised as well, and the achievements are pretty straightforward, there's only 10 or 11, but it is a good fun one. 12 minutes. Now here's another I wondered if I should put on. After all, this game is brilliant, story is for just fantastic, but in terms of complete straightforwardness, sometimes it is not. And I'll tell you why. Basically, others have reported following a specific guide, only to have it appear different for them. So they've um, done exactly the same as some guides, for example mine, but they've had different actions for whatever reason. So, you know, that's just, you know, the achievements are easy enough, but just be warned, the game may be a bit screwy on the rare occasion. Minecraft. Now this has been tampered with for ages, and tampered with in a good way. Basically, you can slap out all of the achievements thanks to jumping into other worlds and 
Yeah, just basically doing your thing. The achievements unlock. Well done. Omno. Now this was not only a beautiful game, but rather enjoyable thanks to a one-man team. It also gives us easy achievements too. We got collectibles to grab, puzzles to do. They're all very easy apart from one randomized puzzle, which may take a little bit of time, but apart from that, it is just noise. Again, also have a guide if needed. The Artful Escape. Now this is genuinely one of, one of my favorite games this year so far, and I'd call it more of an experience than a game. If you are yet to play it, just get on it and you'll see what I mean. It is just basically one big giant concert, and the achievements are simple. There's a few missable ones, but they're all easy to do and pick up. Just, I tell you, just play this and enjoy it. Genesis Noir. Now this is a tricky one, not in terms of completion and achievements, but in terms of, is it actually any good or not? A lot of people enjoyed it, but a lot of people get confused and kind of unenjoyed it. And it seems to play very much like Jitalon's Dark Rim Moriopolis. It's confusing, it's enjoyable, it's easy, so you can't complain too much. Goat Simulator. Here we are then, the king of the goats. This ultimate in hilarity, and thanks to the DLC and loads of others, achievements are just fantastic, except for one, which is the stupid, annoying, angry bird style, angry goat achievement. But once you get that one, the rest are nothing but fun, hilarious, and genuinely enjoyable. Lost Words Beyond the Page. Now here's a game that not only provides us with easy and intriguing gameplay, but also a story that will literally tug at your heartstrings. Plus again, the achievements are an easy completion, but there are a lot of collectibles again, so just be aware of that one. I mean, what's not to love? Undertale. Classical classic time again. You don't have to get violent through the game. You don't have to be nice. You can do whatever the hell you want. But you know, if you follow a guide, you'll get everything a lot easier. You don't even have to finish it though, you can get 75% in, get all the achievements and quit. But are you a quitter? Or have you got stuff to do, which we all have? Either way, this is an amazing game that you shouldn't miss out on. Kill it with fire. Now, this be the one for those that hate spiders. Now you can kill the crap out of spiders with a ton of various weapons. Fantastic! The only thing about this game is, at the time of this recording, in December 2021, there is no option to invert the controls, weirdly enough, so it may be worth waiting for a patch if you are one that do play with inverted controls. Otherwise, you'll just need to do everything on a level, and make sure to do the missable achievements on certain levels too. It is easy, it is fun, and it's also damn satisfying. Mighty Goose now I was debating whether to put this one on, as there are a few achievements that may look hard and tricky, but there are things you can do to just smash it. Now many of the ones are for getting an S rank in all levels, but if you play and finish all 9 levels, then play it in New Game Plus and finish the 5 main levels, you will get an upgrade which is basically God Mode. So the achievements such as kill a boss in a minute, finish a level in 5 minutes and S ranks become a literal cakewalk. Just equip yourself with the best stuff in your inventory, and you should be golden. Raji, an ancient epic. Now this is another game that seems to have slipped somewhat under the radar. This was a really enjoyable game with good achievements to smash out. But again, be aware, there is no chapter select for some reason. How a game still doing that? And there are a lot of collectibles, so... You have to make sure you're paying attention so you don't miss one, then you have to rage bash your controller and launch it into oblivion if you do actually end up missing one. Sea of Solitude. Now, if there was one game that would take you by surprise about how good it is and how in-depth the story is, this is it. This action adventure certainly surprised me and the achievements are really not bad or difficult at all either. You'll have to collect a lot of bottles and smash up some seagulls, all the while avoiding big monster that's trying to get you in the sea. Someone seems to have a small wiener issue, huh? <laughs> um, anyway, if you do need a guide for it, I do have one available for you. Backbone. Now this was genuinely a really good game. It kind of faded a little towards the end, but in all fairness, uh, this is still a great game. 
Now, there wasn't much in terms of guides for it and any meaningful walkthroughs, but that's where I came in. Now, the list does seem potentially annoying and hard to do, but when you put them in a good order, they're actually quite easy. We have to play through all five acts, doing certain things in certain chapters, plus we have to sniff six things, read six books, and interact with the goose a few times throughout the game. The only slightly annoying one is having to be nice and amazing to our female companion Renee throughout the game to get an achievement for falling in love with her, basically. But following my guide, which I have put up on the channel, you'll get this in around six hours or so. But bear in mind too, the full thousand Gs will be will consist of one full playthrough, three quarters of a second playthrough, and a quarter of a third playthrough. Hellblade's Sinuous Sacrifice. Now this is one of my actual most favourite games here. It's a brilliant game that doesn't take you too long to master, and there are no achievements you can miss as you obtain them all just by playing through the game. There's linear paths on all levels, so you really can't get that lost. Overall, I say, play the balls out of this thing. Then we can patiently wait for the next instalment in the series. Hypnospace Outlaw. Now, for those that have played this, you'll be asking why is this on the easy game list? Because generally, it is easy. You have to do a certain amount of missions, a few missables, but the game overall is very short. Now, the reason it comes up as sort of four to six hours or whatever it is, is because the final achievement is for looking at every single page in the entire game from the past to the present. Now, it's not hard in the slightest, but it is a grind fest, massive grind fest. So make sure that you're playing on PC and you get good energy drink down yet so you don't fall asleep. Again, I've got a guide ready for you if needed. Carry on. Welcome to another horror game that's in kind of reverse. So basically you play as the monster this time, stalking your prey, eating the nuts off them, quite literally, and job done. Um, sometimes you're invincible, other times you need to be strategic, but the only problem is there's no in-game map, so backtracking can be potentially confusing, but luckily the achievements you get are basically all done as you progress, and that's just for finding the nine containments, then backtracking to them. Nice! Flynn, Son of Crimson. Now, just like the others in this list, it can seem like this would be a tough completion legit. And you're right. Luckily though, the devs kindly put in an accessibility menu where you can turn on invincibility and just blast through the game nice and easily. Still have to pay attention to certain missable achievements throughout the game, but all are easy enough and just need a slight coin grind in the end for all upgrades. But other than that, invincibility on equals easy stuffs. And again, got a guide for this too if you need it. Last stop. Now, very much like your Life's a Strangers and Tells Me's Wises, Last Stops is plays very similar in terms of choice and tons of dialogue, but you have to be careful with some dialogue throughout the game and some achievements, i.e. you have to hit all the bottles in Chapter 2, I think, first time, um, play the piano right first time, but they're still easy enough, and if you do end up messing up, Chapter Select can be your pal. And once again, I've got another guide for that if you need it. Dodgeball Academia. Now, just like Flynn, Sum of Crim, this would be hard to beat legit, especially if you're not as good at dodgeball turn-based turn type games like me. I am awful. Again, though, thanks to the deliciousness that is accessibility menu, with the option to turn AI damage up or down, how much damage you take, etc., getting this a 1,000 becomes a cakewalk, if not a little boringly tedious towards the end. And once again, I've got a guide up for you if you need it. Echo Generation. Now, this is one that I kind of oohed and add. First off, it's a brilliant game in terms of story and adventure mechanics, and the achievements are very straightforward, but like Dodgeball Academia, you will end up going back and forth between places, and it can get eventually slightly tedious. Now, the reason I oohed and add are because some of the fights being turn-based can be a little tough, especially with some of the bosses, but with the right upgrades and some slight patience, you can get the job done. And like I said, achievements are straightforward enough. The Forgotten City. Now this one I really enjoyed. Now in terms of enemies, there are only a few close to the beginning you actually need to worry about. Otherwise, it's a case of following a guide and running along at the same pace. Now, as good as it is, and the achievements list can again be straightforward sort of when you know what to do, it all makes sense when you're in the game. 
but especially for the beginning part. If you take too long doing something, the game actually just moves on without you, and sometimes the AI can randomly go somewhere and you may have trouble finding them. That's why it's best to manually save every 5 or 10 minutes or so, so if you do run into a problem, you can re reload and they should appear. So if you follow a guide, my guide for example, which I've got up, <laughs> wink wink, you need to be roughly at the same pace I am, which isn't too fast though. Uh, again though, pause in the game, stops in game timer 2 if needed. The Medium. This is another great game from the Bloober team. The Medium acts as a psychological horror and it works well, but in terms of actual difficulty, it's not at all. There's no real enemies or boss fights to contend with, and the only real annoying achievements can be the collectibles, again missing one will hurt, and the phantom achievement for never getting caught by the demon. It's annoying because some people unlock it when they're meant to, but others haven't, so it does get a bit weird. But again, the demon is actually really easy to avoid as he just does a normal standard route, and you only have to avoid him sort of four times. So do not panic, but again, if needed, I've got a guide available for you. Grim Fandango Remastered and here's the third out of three classic LucasArts point-and-click adventure games. It's another fun and enjoyable one, only this time it's quite the bit longer. Just from gameplay, there's no achievements that are overly difficult at all or anything, just again missable ones that you need to keep an eye out for. And another guide awaits you if needed and you haven't played it yet. All the Walking Dead series. Now there's a few Walking Deads on Game Pass, you've got The Walking Dead 2, A New Frontier and Michonne, and they all play the same. Telltale style dialogue choices, got there in the end, unlock achievements completing each chapter, and probably watch your beloved character get mauled zombie style to death. Lee anyone? <laughs> Less sad. Human Fall Flat. Now this will probably take more than 8-10 to 10 hours, and that's only due to the level of DLC that's been introduced, but make no mistake, this is, once you get used to the handling and controls, a very fun and easy achievement game. Now don't get me wrong, there are some that can cause slight frustration until you get it um, right, but there's nothing too difficult in terms of, you know, absolute frustration and controller throwing. It just takes a few tries needed, basically. Uh, now it's more than just a 1k game too, it's a 2120 gamer score game with a crap ton of DLC which are easier than the main game. So if you can't be arsed with the main game, you can just get another 1k doing the DLC. Nice! Max, Curse of the Brotherhood. Now this is a great game with great easy achievements. 36 to be precise, which can be mostly unlocked as you progress. If you need or miss something, there is chapter select to gain from as well. Also this is a one hit kill type game, which again, it does seem annoying, but it's really not in all fairness. The checkpoint system is quite good, so if you do die, you never start too far back. Faye. Now I'm kind of saddened that more people haven't played this excellent puzzle type platform and adventure game. Of course using a guide makes this a breeze and in terms of achievements, all you need to do is complete everything and gather all collectibles too, which there are, like I said, quite a few. Now you just press the right bumper to go to your destination and don't bother exploring too much because it usually ends up in a dead end. There are only two missable achievements in the game as well, but make sure to get them done so you don't have to backtrack all the way to that point. Maneater. Now, you want to be a man-eating shark hell-bent on ye old revengi? Then look no further than that's this magnificent specimen of game. Not only is this hilariously fun, but the achievements are basically unmissable. Now, of course, there are boss fights and you need to get what's effectively your wanted level up to 10, but with the right upgrades, mainly the bone upgrades, which were the best for me, you can just mash the right bumper button to destroy all boats in literally no time at all. It's fun, it's easy, so well, get to it. And once again, I do have a guide for the main game if you need it to, but not the DLC. Just like Conan, you have to pay for the DLC, which is annoying. A Plague Tale Innocence. Now, why is this on here? Yeah, I'll tell you why, buddy. I'm not your buddy guy. I'm not your friend, buddy. Uh, because, actually... It is an easy game. It's a fantastic game with easy achievements and everything about it is magnificent. 
No, but seriously, for such a good game, we get 17 story-related achievements. You have to do specific tasks or actions in certain chapters and collect 50 collectibles. But again, nothing's overly frustratingly difficult. Some parts may take a few tries, but uh, pff, even the final boss, to be honest, is piss easy when you know what he does, which is not a lot. Chucks a couple of rats at you. Um, but if you're yet to play it, again, I do have a guide ready and available for you. The Wild at Heart. This is another fun adventure game. The combat isn't all that stressful and puzzles aren't overly difficult to figure out. Plus you get help from these little midget things called spritelings that do certain tasks for you, so that's nice. But at night enemies will come out and attack you and kill your spritelings, so you know, just bear that one in mind. But achievements wise, a very straightforward list uh, basically includes getting upgrades and other certain actions, but another bunch of collectibles we need to grab, including one that you need to pick up before the game ends, otherwise you'll lose access to it and have to annoyingly start again. Control this is another beast of a game which people really enjoyed and although it's not too difficult with the right upgrades attached, it makes it even easier since the devs popped in a cheeky accessibility menu which enables one hit kills and invincibility so you can breeze through the game if needed at your own pace or you can just smash it out if you want to get it done quickly. Great story but again there are lots of collectibles and upgrades to fully enhance but just like next on the list. You won't get mind. You won't get mind. You won't mind because it doesn't get tedious or boring. Psychonauts 2. And finally, we have a beast of a game again. A lot of people's game of the year and all round just fing awesome. Now, as amazing as, that, as this game is, what makes it onto the list, as I have done with games earlier on, is the fact that you can turn on invincibility if needed to just simply breeze through the game with no issues at all. Why the game is so long? The story, of course, but we need to upgrade a lot. We have to get to rank 100 and collect a hell of a lot more collectibles too. It is fun, but there is just a, a ton of stuff to do. But again, it is one of those that you won't get bored with, which, me which makes life hella fit. So there we have it then guys and gals, December 2021's updated Xbox Game Pass Easiest Achievements list. Or games list, yeah, close enough. Hopefully I've managed to put some on which haven't been covered in other videos to give you all a broader horizon and some, you know, something and some games you may have missed which you can now get into and hopefully enjoy. Of course as time goes on these games will disappear and new ones will take its place, so I'll see you in about half a year for another update. But thanks so much for watching guys and gals, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with a friend too. A shout out and big thanks to my Patreon supporters as well, absolute legends of the game. And there we go then, so I guess I'll see you in the next one then guys and gals, big love.